I always thought the most worst thing that could happen in a craft room is clutter. <laughs> and I was today years old when I found out that there's something even more worse. And that is if you accidentally, I swear it was accidentally, <laughs> throw away what you wanted to use to create your Defamoramba journal cover. <laughs> You've heard right. I don't know what what was in my brain when that happened, but I have accidentally thrown away a very, very important piece that I wanted to use and actually upcycle <laughs> for my Defamoramba journal cover. So now, today, I have to improvise a little bit <laughs> to make this work. But I'm a junk journaler and I can do that. <laughs> Don't freak your freak. Just try to keep calm and go on. I have a little bit, somehow, the feeling that this little guy, Effie, has to do something with this accident. <laughs> since he is in my craft room and since he is waiting for Defamoramba together with me and you perhaps as well, some really, really strange things are happening here. And one of those things is that I have thrown away this piece for my cover. He is somehow cute and I have the feeling that I want to pet him the whole day. But at the same time, he is a little bit mischievous and some really really suspicious things are going on here but <laughs> that will not stop me from creating my defamoramba journal cover today hi this is Luisa Hansel <laughs> nice to see you here today and if you perhaps are new here let me quickly explain what defamoramba is defamoramba is a series in December hosted by my dear friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies and myself. And it's all about creating ephemera during December. That is also why this series is called Defemoramba. The word is like, you know, a puzzle out of December and ephemera. December plus ephemera is Defemoramba. And we are really happy to host the third year of this popular series this year. If you have missed the previous videos, this year we already had some videos um, for like, you know, preparation and information and all that stuff. If you have missed those, then you can find a playlist linked below the video with all of the videos that we have already published this year. And in the description box, you can also find the playlists of the two previous years so that you can watch those videos as well if you want. <laughs> there's, I have to mention that really quickly. There's one viewer of our channels. She's doing a Defamoramba marathon at the moment. You are just so cute. And she's watching, obviously, all of the old videos. And every time when she has finished one, she writes a comment. And that comment says, um, Defamoramba Marathon. And I'm just so, so amazed by that. It's just so cute. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you also want to do that and watch that in like a marathon, then you can find the playlists linked below. I am going to um, take this binder today, which I want to use for this year's Defamoramba journal. So this is now a binder, but in the end of this video, it's a journal. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it will still be the same base, but I want to decorate it and then use it as my Defamoramba journal. Today you can also find a video on Barbara's channel, Barbara at 49 Dragonflies, where she shows you how she decorates her cover. And I'm really hoping that she had not such a bad accident <laughs> that she has not thrown away the material that she wanted to use. If you're wondering why Effie is so big, 
I have made something for you because I want to have Effie in this size, really big, on this cover here. I mean, he's existing in different sizes, isn't he? I mean, he's in our craft room. Sometimes <clears throat> he's a little bit smaller, like for example here. And <laughs> sometimes he's a little bit bigger. So he seems to have something like um, a magical function of his body so that he can vary his size. I mean, that's really cool. <laughs> but perhaps you're wondering where to get this size because in our printables that we have for Defemoramba, he is not in this size available. But I have made a freebie for you when you where you can get him in exactly this size. And of course, this was a whole sheet of paper. You have just seen me cutting this out and then you can print it and then you have it like matching to such a binder. And you can also, of course, shrink, shrink this down and make it smaller. And I say this so extremely because you might have a smaller journal, then you can make this big image smaller. But please do yourself a favor and don't take a small picture um, perhaps you remember we have used this here from the shipping label that Barbara and I had so this was from my shipping label but it's the same like rule for Barbara's label as well um, if you use a tiny picture like this and you make that bigger with your computer then the results will get really really bad you will get a really bad quality making a picture smaller is not the problem but making a picture bigger is not so good and that's why i have made you this as a freebie so that you can print that out in a good quality in such a big size <clears throat> so then my original <laughs> my original plan was i wanted to make and i will make that <laughs> a shaker element on this cover so that it looks like he has something or looks through th something um, where you later on can take the journal and shake it and then you have this, you know, uh, shakety shake thingy in front of his face. And I had saved in my Tim Holtz trash can, that's a really fancy basket with all of my packaging from Ideology and other things from Tim. I had saved <laughs> a package that was similar to this. Perhaps you know this. Why am I showing the, you this? Because I want to um, show you what you could use instead of what I am using today. Those packages are really, really nice to make those shaker elements. But with this, and I had this in my <laughs> Tim Holtz trash can left, this is too deep for me. Yeah, so this is... I mean, this is more than my finger that is way too deep if you want to put some really big things in here and you want to have a really loud noise when you shake your journal. That would be not a problem, but imagine we would have this here. I mean, you know, <laughs> somehow. And then you would open this. Then your journal would um, be in the air here approximately five centimeters. And that's not what I want. And uh, that's why I can't use this, but I wanted to show you this because I'm sure that many of you have packages like this laying around. And uh, if that is not too high, this thing, then you could use that to make such a shaker. I have found ooh, a piece of feather here. Holy crap. <laughs> I have found this thing. This comes from the packaging of the watercolor pencils by Ranger. So if you have those and you have the packaging and you have this and you don't know what to do with that, this is also a good material because this is relatively thick. And I also want to use this in exactly this size today. So that means my shaker is going to be really big. And actually, I have to admit, I haven't made a shaker before. And I'm assuming that it's better to have something really sturdy instead of a flimsy acetate. And that's why I want to use this. But before I create my um, shaker element, I want to... You have to go away for a moment. <laughs> I think I had a, a clown for breakfast today. Um, before I do that and make the shaker element, I want to do something with the background. Effie will go later on here, but I want to do something on the background. I want to use this collage paper by Tim Holtz to glue that to this thing. And I have a background within a, a few minutes. So this is called Typeset. And 
it looks like this and it's <sighs> I could pet this the whole day mm, to glue this I use some collage medium mm, you could use any glue that can handle such a thin paper for example liquitex gel medium would be an alternative mod podge or something like that and i'm just remembering that i have a video where i show you how i decorated my inner window frames with this collage paper if you want to check that out then you can find the link in the description box as well so when this is completely dry we can take a sand paper or a sanding disc where have i put my oh, here <laughs> something like this so this is the ranger sanding disc but you could also use a really fine sandpaper that doesn't have to be round but this is really handy because you can take these little round things and put them here to this ink blending tool and now we can start here and just go over the edge of this so that we can remove this what's too much here and this way you can just get rid of this so then when we have that we can take this and i like to distress the edges a little bit more i would just put something underneath so that i have this in the air and that i can do this relatively aggressively because then this gets as irre irregular as possible so then it looks like this and i really like this irregular look of course you could do this even more extremely Ooh, what is this what are you doing here but i like when it's like this and i really like these like tiny damages and when you go over this with your finger you think it's one so this paper is just so one with the cover it's just it's just it's just amazing and now when we close this i'm assuming that the paper will tear here because of the construction of this binder so let's see oh it's relatively sturdy uh, look here there it has torn a little bit but that doesn't matter because when i look at it like so or like this then um, i think it would be nice to have this distressing here as well so that we have a rectangle of this like craft paper color so i will take my sanding disc again and just go over this here so then I want to ink the edges a little bit and for that I'm going to use some Distress Oxide Ink Gloss Shadow I found something that can help me where is it now holy crap I have ah. <laughs> I have not thrown it away but I've just put it to the other table so this is one of those baseboard frames by tim holtz and i really like this frame but it has some problems i can't use this exactly this but i can use it as a template and uh, why can't i use this because i want to add a label here to the bottom and as you can see this label and i was want to use this big label it doesn't fit on the frame it's too big for the frame and it would look absolutely weird in my eyes that's personal preference if it peeks out here on the bottom but i think the width of this frame and also this window is the perfect size what am i trying to say here if you have something that doesn't fit perfectly you can take it as a template anyway and that's exactly what i'm going to use uh, going to do here now i will use this as a template to make this whole thing work but i will make my own frame out of another material i want to use this this is a little thicker and this is hopefully big enough to get three layers of the size of this so that i can then layer that on top of each other so that it gets a little thicker so i'm going to take this 
because I know that the width of this is perfect. And I also like the thickness of this and this so that I then later on can just take that and use it as a template to trace this here. But first I will make a line here because then I have the width on my paper here. Then I'm going to take this little thing and I place it here because I know um, the window later is going to become exactly the same size like this um, here so that I know that I can see this distance here now and make it like, you know, eye-pleasing or how can I say that? And I will go a little down here, like so, for example. Let's make the line here as well so that I know where to cut. So that I then have approximately the same distance from this edge of this, this inner frame to the label and from the label to my little mark here. So that's approximately the same distance. Now I will just jump to my other paper trimmer and just trim this down. Yeah, sometimes you can hope for something and it will not happen. I don't know what happened now. In the German video, I could get three of those out of the one paper. I don't know what happened. I've just taken another one. So, uh, this should work now. I'm going to take this and I will line it up like so, so that, you know, the longer part where I have no orientation is here on the top now and this is on the bottom. I put my fingers on the left and the right, place that carefully to my table here and then I can just trace the window here. Then we can quickly check if this is correct and I think it's just fine so that we then can glue these pieces on top of each other and for that I'm going to use some double-sided tape if I can find it and additionally some liquid glue. The double-sided tape makes that this piece and this piece are going to stick together in the moment I press it. And the liquid glue, I will add in a second, makes that also the areas in between have glue. And this gets then really sturdy in the end, because when the glue is dry, of course, mm, the whole thing gets more sturdy as well. So that means... We are going to add some liquid glue to this now and the reason why I'm doing that is relatively easy because this way I don't have to wait for the glue to dry because when I now put this here the double-sided tape will still work I mean it's perhaps not so sticky anymore than without this glue because the glue is wet now and there's something wet on the double-sided tape, of course. But um, it will hold my pieces in place and especially down. So that I don't have to use any clamps or something like that to clamp this together and then wait. So I'm lining this up here because now, of course, it will stick immediately. And I have not so much wiggle room anymore. Like with only liquid glue this color is just amazing for this cover so i thought why don't we try to create a similar color on our piece here and this color is like really similar to a dark version of forest moss and i have my forest moss spray stain here and then i will first Go over this and try to get I want to get this covered but not so regular so I'm pressing really slightly and I move this thing at the same time so that this looks a little bit like uh, my thing is clocked but it isn't clocked it's, it's spritzing totally normal 
but when you press not so much then you also don't waste so much of this spray and you get some really irregular areas look this is what i was looking for when this soaks into the paper now it looks like really used and really old and that's what i want to have so now i'm going to take my heat gun and i will quickly dry this i am expecting that it then gets a little lighter again but wait a second please we will then make something really cool and then it looks really really amazing <laughs> i promise you so um the next thing that we can do is we can take for example a distress crayon i have chosen the same color forest moss and now we can look where those darker spots are and just scribble over those darker spots to get a little bit more interest and a little variation so then you have the these marks here and you can see the color is i mean it's still forest moss but the crayon comes out a little bit differently even if it's the same color and when you now go over this you get a really nice patina and a really nice additional effect and another cool thing is we can now also use the oxide version of forest moss and for that I'm going to use my ink pad, my oxide ink pad, forest moss, and I'm just putting a little bit of that here, add some water. I make sure that I have these tiny little drops here. So what you want to do is, you want to take this and carefully flip this in here, turn it around and see where you already got some of the oxide ink. It's here relatively hard to see, but you can see it in the camera, it's nearly invisible. But please believe me, in, in reality, you can not you can see it where it got like wet. And try to get this like hopping into the ink. Yes? Don't press with your whole hand. This looks now relatively weird. Will turn into a masterpiece in a second. <laughs> so let's again take our heat tool and dry this so then it looks like this and i think the oxidation is not so extremely visible in the camera but with my eyes i can see it and and it's just amazing but we can make this even more amazing i think this already looks really really cool really old and really vintage but we can do something even more ah bam so I will take this again, just as a little help. And I will take my sanding disc again, because here on this frame, we have these light edge on the outside and here on the inside. And I want to try to get something similar here. And that was also one of the reasons why I um, went over this with my spray stain relatively carefully and oh no I have oh no I forgot to round the edges here oh no I wanted to have round edges <laughs> what can I do now ah I am sure my corner rounder can't do this now anymore yeah oh no I want to cry <sighs> Fuck. can I use this as a template Oh no, it looks so much better with round corners. Why can I know that? Am I a fortune teller? No, but I already recorded my German video and I know how wonderful it looks. Oh, if you want to do this, holy crap. Don't freak your freak. Just, ah. If you want to have round edges and you have used something like this, you know, three layers, of this please round make the the edges round before you glue the layers together otherwise the material is too thick for a corner rounder ah oh, this looks really wonky now but let's try to fix that because especially with the sanding disc here on the edges when they are round that looks so so much better Okay, so then let's 
quickly talk about the options that you have next. Um, if you now think the, the color of this is perfect and you want to leave it exactly like it is, then you could decide um, to, to just, yeah, really leave it as it is because this already looks really, really vintage. And I think this is a nice piece. If you think I want to have this um, matte and I don't want to see that this is like, you know, this craft paper stuff, then you could, of course, use some embossing powder, which is matte. For example, the frosted crystal embossing powder. That would also give you um, a nice additional texture on this and you could get rid of this paper look. But frosted crystal is matte if you use it right. <laughs> you know, you can overheat it and then it's glossy. Uh, but if you use it correctly, then it's matte. But you get a texture. If you want to have it glossy, but you want to have the same color, you could use clear embossing powder to put that over here and then it would be glossy, but it would be the same color. Because, you know, clear embossing powder shows exactly the color that is underneath. It gets a little bit more like intense, yes, but the color wouldn't change. When I look at this now, I think I mm, want to have this a little darker. This is still a little bit too light for me. And what can we do if we want to have this darker? And at the same time, I want to have it a little bit glossy with a little bit some kind of weird texture. That is really easy. We can use some embossing glaze. Because compared to embossing powder, embossing glaze is translucent. That means if I now use a color, I will use pumice stone here. That is this um, brownish gray. This is translucent. That means we can see the color through here, but we will see a mixture of pumice stone and forest moss later because this powder has the pumice stone color. Yeah, so we get a mixture. And with, um, I think pumice stone also lost shadow if you um, don't want to make it too dark or hickory smoke if you want to have it really dark would be good options for this trick. And another good thing is, if I now take my embossing dabber, I can control where I want to have this effect. Here on these areas where this lighter paper comes through, and also here, and I see, is that already enough for me? I, when I see it on the white paper now, I have the feeling that I want to have this a little bit more extreme. Let me just, sorry, let me just go over this and bring a little bit more of this craft paper to the foreground. I want to see more of that because now the like difficult thing, I mean, we are junk journaler. Where, where are the difficult things? Yeah, show them to us. There are no difficult things because we can solve every problem. But um, I want to have some lighter areas and I want to see those lighter areas later as well. How to reach that? Because when you now take the embossing glaze and you put that over this material, you have to be careful that you don't put too much embossing powder or mm, in the ideal case, no embossing glaze. I just said embossing powder. I mean embossing glaze. Um, the ideal case would be to put no embossing powder to those lighter areas to make them not too dark. Because if you put pumice stone on to these lighter areas, they will get darker as well. They will get then a mixture of pumice stone and this color. And that will make it darker, obviously. Um, and I don't want that. And that's also the reason why I'm doing this and try to get more of those lighter areas so that we have this really cool look later and that we see this craft paper color later. So uh, when we are satisfied with that, we can take this and this and an embossing dabber. And uh, what I just wanted to say is you can now control where to get this. So I will be careful that I dab around this so that I don't get any embossing ink to those lighter areas. Then we are going to take the glaze 
and throw that on here. And when you then lift that up, it can happen that you see that it also sticks to areas where you don't want it to stick, meaning those lighter areas. Even if there's no embossing, um, yeah, even if there's no embossing ink, it can happen that it sticks there. What to do if that happens and what to do if you want to have this even more irregular, especially here on the frame, just take a dry paintbrush and brush off the powder. <laughs> and this feels a little bit like being a magician because when you see this coming to life, then you have the feeling that this is your, how is that said in English? magic wand <laughs> and you know this is really really awesome and you will see in a second why we did all of those steps that we've just done this is magic in my eyes Please just take a second to think about that we only needed a few minutes to create this effect. And I think this looks so authentically vintage. It's just crazy, isn't it? And now ooh, I'm going to take some strong double-sided tape. This is from Scotch and I will glue the acetate to the frame so then we can go on and take the little label here and I will take this material that is what I have cut out from the window and I will use that to cut that down and put it then later on in here so next I want to stamp to this little piece of paper here and since the word defamoramba would be really long and I don't have so small letter stamps I, I thought about something else and I came to that idea also because this thing looks so vintage and it looks like from a really old file thingy yeah from a really like old office thing so i came to the idea to stamp a d for defamoramba and a 23 for 2023 and now i'm going to take a little bit of ground espresso distress crayon you could also take a darker ink or whatever but i like this color in combination with the rest here I'm going to take the rest of my vintage photo oxide ink here because that's already diluted with water so that I can grab the crayon here and with that the darker color and then I just go in here and let that run into some areas here and you can guess what comes next. I've already plugged in my uh, yeah, hot glue gun because now I want to do several different things. First of all, and I will glue this down with hot glue later, and I will tell you in a second why I use hot glue and not something else. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to find something that we can use to make a little distance. Because if this shall become a shaker thing, we need a distance so that we can put something below so that it can shake. Yeah, we need a little space, uh, yeah, a little something here to make this distance. And for that, I'm just going to use some foam tape, just like that. And now <laughs> we have this distance on the one hand so that we later on can put something inside that can shake around. But I thought. I want to have something where we can pet Effie. So I thought, why don't we take some feathers, I have some here, and put those below this frame. Like 
so. <lacht> äh. <lacht> And you have that. You can of course then decide what you want to put into this shaker thing. And to all of you who are like really professional card makers, can you please help me? <laughs> I mean, now it's too late, but for my next project, could you please help me and tell me how you, how you find out how much you put into such a shaker thingy? Is there something like a rule or so how you can find out how much you put in there so that the thing in the end looks still harmonious when you shake it? I mean, when you... <laughs> take this when it's finished and you put that for example to your shelf yeah like a display thingy decoration then everything of this will fall down to the edge of the frame and of course I want to see that even if it's down and I'm not shaking at that moment but how to find out how much you can put in there that it looks good but now I realize that I have forgotten something That is nice. That is really, really nice. But that's also the reason why I bought these little guys. I quickly have to take this off. Holy moly. I wanted to make some white splatters before I glue the shaker thing. Okay, so then mm, we are going to take this stuff. And the reason why I'm going to use hot glue to glue this is very simple. Because um, since I have the feathers on the frame, the back side of this is relatively uneven here now. And with the hot glue, I can make sure that this is closed in the end. So then I quickly want to shade this area here um, where his feet are because I think it still looks like he is flying in the air even if we have put him here to this little line. I'm going to use some ground espresso distress crayon to do that. Okay, so here we go and then I want to add some book corners because this journal is going to be used regularly in December and also before December I mean when I record the videos for the Defemember series I will use it very often of course and I want to protect my corners a little bit I mean it's something like protection and decoration at the same time because this is a relatively sturdy material of course this binder is really good quality and probably nothing would happen there but you know me <laughs> so um, then the last thing that I want to do today is I want to put some papers and some lace to the inside of the binder here and for that I want to choose Two pages of my Defamoremba digital paper. Um, you can find several different items in my shop. Defamoremba 2023 is the name of the paper collection. And of course, <laughs> it's with Effie. And you can find out with this paper collection where Effie lives. You can, for example, find out how he decorates for Christmas. And that he's a really cozy little guy on Christmas here wrapped into this little blanket and he also likes to have many plants so that's the reason why he has his own greenhouse as you can see here and this little succulent is his favorite plant he also likes to make himself some Mm, homemade food like for example um, marmalade and jelly and those things like those ah, how is that called hey, how do you say that when you put some 
cucumbers, for example, into a glass with like sugar and vinegar and that stuff. And then it's there for a longer time. And then you can eat it even after 200 years. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and <laughs> he has also some oil and that stuff. Everything is homemade. And he has a really interesting shelf. Look <laughs> where he stores those things. And when he has done all of that, of course, he has to clean his dishes and all of the glasses and his cups and everything. So he has a kitchen, of course, as well. And there are growing some pink flowers in his kitchen. Can you be a little bit proud of me that I have used pink here, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so then um, sometimes he also <laughs> wants to go for a walk and he likes to go for a walk with a balloon in his hand and that's not only a balloon but it's a special balloon look it has these little thingies here from the mushrooms it's a mushroom balloon oh. it's pink as well <laughs> and he of course also likes to be outside and play around outside a little bit and he also has look a little outside workspace like a little outside studio here where he can, where he can do his own crafty things and sometimes he also gets dirty and he needs a bath and after the bath he is a little bit tired sometimes so of course he needs a bed where he can sleep and of course he likes to go on vacation as well. Sometimes he travels to Vienna and he visits Barbara in Vienna, but he also likes to go to the beach. And if you know me, then you can imagine that I think about Lido di Ostia when I see this. And he's collecting a little um, driftwood here. And of course he takes that home and uses that for his craft projects. And He's one. Um, he's this little guy who can't decide if he likes tea or coffee better. So here you can see him with a little latte macchiato, so obviously a coffee. But he likes tea as well, and he's like you know he has those tea days and those coffee days, and he can't really decide. <laughs> I did this because um, I like coffee and Barbara likes tea. So I wanted to have this combination here as well. And I did another thing. I will show you then in my German. I always say German journal. In the, the German. In the journal from the German video. Because the other two pages are in here. He sometimes. Also. Watches 49 dragonflies on YouTube. So you can see Barbara's uh, brand logo in here i've put that into this little tv so that um, you can see what his favorite program is here and he also has a little studio where he yeah he he's like a little he's this cozy kind of crafter yeah he likes to have different places where he can find out different things and where he can invent different things and then show that to his friends and you know perhaps you get this combination or this not combination this context to defam ramba i've tried to bring a lot of story telling into this paper collection you can find that in my shop why have i put those pages away i want to choose to um you can find this paper collection in my shop the link is down below in the description box and there's not only these pages, but there's even more. So uh, you can find a whole, how do you call that, uh, category in my shop that's called Defemoramba. So when you look in my shop at the left side, there you can find the word Defemoramba. If you click that, you will see all of the items that are available. And it's totally worth it to check out that category regularly. I mean, not every two hours, please. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. But um, perhaps you want to check that out um, regularly. You know, in a... How do you say that? In a bigger frequency? Is that a word? Um, because I will definitely add more things to the shop in the near future. Not everything I want to offer to you is ready yet. 
not everything is finished yet that's what i'm trying to say um so perhaps you want to check that out and see what's available there but of course i will also tell you in my videos if there's something new available i will not let you stand alone in the dark <laughs> without knowing what's new of course i will tell you that but perhaps you also don't watch every video yeah so that's why i mentioned that i've just marked this here so that i know the size that i want to use for here but i don't like to have this naked frame there and because of that i want to cover that up with some lace i want to go with this lace this is relatively like you know plastic it's it's not um natural material or something but um, the advantage of this is that i have this little gap in the middle and that makes it foldable and it folds really easy and flat look and that makes this black even a little darker and i like that so i will fold it in the middle like so and for this i even don't need an iron so i can just lay it down Ooh. cut this off here and now i will just glue that down with some hot glue because that is the fastest and easiest way and i will do that all around the three sides here of each page so now with this lace we can also see that effie sometimes likes to go to the dark side of crafting a little bit like gothic themed look <laughs> i i was really surprised when i have taken out the black lace that this fits so well i mean here you can see this is just it's just gorgeous this contrast is really really nice and in on some of the other pages i will show you that um in this thing which i've made for the german video look on some of the pages the edges and these outer areas are really dark and it goes into nothing into a really dark color and with this black lace it looks just so cool i think i i so like that i really really love this i really love this <laughs> so cool and now we can pet effie and be happy that he's just so fluffy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so <laughs> i hope you like this and i hope you will create something that makes you happy no matter if it's a journal cover for defame remember or something totally different please just make something that makes you happy and please don't forget to check out barbara's video and to check out what she has done with her defame remember journal cover see you the next time and have a very very crafty day bye bye